I'm just going to start with uh, our group here. I know there's only four of us. If someone wants to repeat or they come in late, I don't want to hold anybody up. I'll strive my best to start on time. We'll keep it short. Uh, if we don't need all the time, we could wrap it up sooner. Uh, if we have a little bit of time at the end and people want to brainstorm about something, we can do that. So here we go, cold start. We're gonna jump right into hole everywhere. And we're gonna push it. I'm gonna back up the car if I'm moving too fast, but what, what we wanna uh, experience is that there's some things that if uh, we haven't used them before, that it's pretty easy to get started. And many of these tools and applications are free. And we want to uh, support anyone and share uh, tips and tricks about how we uh, take advantage of them. So this first one, I, I just want us to go through an experience with it. And then we'll talk about what's the point? Where are you going to use that? Who cares? You know, stuff like that. All right. So if you would like to participate, if you have a handheld device, a cell phone, if you would please send a text message to the, num the five digit number 22333, just those five digits. And in the body of the text message, enter YTB Youth 147. You do not have to be careful about capital letters or that. Uh, you should get a confirmation once you've done that, that you are agreeing to participate and cell phone charges may apply or something like that. You've probably seen that before. And once you've done that, if you'd like to participate, please just send a text message to that number with your first name. And I'll do that right now. And it should show up on the screen. Is everybody able to see that? Okay. So I always feel like that seems like magic. So I think that's just what to do. So if both people who share the same first name participate, awesome. <laughs> You're going to get, uh, 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 you know, more prominent billing on the word, word cloud. So Richard, if you uh, have a device that you can use, if you would go to pollev.com forward slash YTV youth 147. And I'm going to give a quick uh, demo of that. Let's see uh, in, in case uh, someone wants to do that. So I'm going to just jump over here and put in, what did I say? Why or no, <laughs> poll ev.com slash ytbu147. And okay, it puts me in here and I'm going to put my name in again. So I was able to do that both through a browser or uh, as a text message. So uh, Richard is in another country and if that um, so the 22333 may not be an international code. I don't know if it is or is not. I didn't, uh, just, just don't know about that. Uh, so we see we each, uh, those who participated, uh, put in their names. Okay, so that was pretty easy. Let's try it one more time. I'm just going to do a few quick uh, tests on this. Uh, the next one we'll go to uh, is to text the state or country that you are in. If you notice from the previous experience, if you were like were to put the first initial of your last name, which is a good idea, uh, it don't you if you use a dash instead of a space, it'll keep them connected or an underscore or use like an initial cap. So uh, so I'm going to activate this one. All right. And, uh, and so I'm going to put in New Jersey, but I'm not going to put a space uh, in there. So I could either put a space or I, I could either put a dash and underscore or no space. Uh, 
I think it says that this one isn't activated yet. I just got a all right a text that it says it's not active. Thank you. So let's activate it. Boom. All right. All right. So now I'm going to send it in again. Thank you for the heads up on that. Sure. Well, let's see. Uh, okay. So I'm the only one having a hard time. All right. So everybody else is getting it. All right, Florida, my goodness. So I'm going to guess that Audrey H is in Florida. Is that a good guess? Um, all right. Yes. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> so, uh, and Richard is in Jamaica. I don't know if he uh, has a, a way to tell us that or, uh, or if, uh, I know, Richard, you're on mute. You don't have to come off mute. If you do have um, a browser, uh, you could go to pollev.com forward slash YTB Youth 147, and you can put your uh, okay. response in. Uh, yeah, on my internet is not so good right now. OK, so if it's not working, OK. All right. Uh, so I'll uh, I'll check in with you later if if you'd like to uh, try this or or maybe use it in what you're doing. Okay, so I go to the last one, uh, and this is uh, now. Let's see. I'm going to activate this one. This is for your organization name. So whatever you'd like to put in, you could say myself. You could say. Uh, the elephant sanctuary or something like that or or your your of course your own organization i'm going to put in ytb that's my organization ytbnj.org so i'm going to now i'm going to put in ytbnj.org to make that one bigger so we get two votes for it awesome <laughs> Huge. it's gigantic okay so all right. Okay. Awesome. 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 All right. So, all right. So that's our cold open on a hot day. So I'm going to, uh, you know, pull that down and put it aside for a moment. Uh, just put it over there and come back over here. And I'm going to just boost this up. Uh, is that coming through loud and clear? And uh, like larger than life uh, letters and all that. Perfectly. Awesome. Okay, so so three, at least three new things, probably four. It's hard to know everything that's going on. But uh, TechSoup Connect is a a new campaign or strategy or program that. TechSoup, the organization, which I'm going to talk about a little bit, is launching like right now. We are one of the very first groups that are ourselves launching. Uh, and our name is TechSoup Connect for Time Banking Organizations, but it's open to any anyone who's interested. Uh, we're, we're not going to be talking uh, particularly about time banking, we're going to be talking about uh, technology that uh, any of us or new ideas that can be useful for nonprofit organizations or any community organization, anyone who likes the ideas can apply them. Uh, when I start talking a little bit more about TechSoup, it, uh, the organizations that can register and take advantage of their uh, offerings, uh, of the, the organizations that are eligible must be uh, nonprofit organizations, either NGOs, non governmental, or nonprofit, or libraries or schools. So uh, it's June 8th today, and, and the uh, you know, the main purpose, as I've been saying, is to share information about, uh, particularly about TechSoup, because it's such an awesome resource uh, that uh, I found that 
some of the applications that I use that are available through TechSoup that the best, it's just the best, uh, uh, you know, opportunities to get them through TechSoup, particularly for pricing, training services, stuff like that. But we also want to share ideas in general for how anybody, particularly nonprofit organizations, can apply technology in smart ways, however and wherever and whatever types of technologies they use uh, to best uh, fulfill their mission. And that is, uh, in, in, in essence, the mission of TechSoup. So we're scheduled for 75 minutes if we need it. And I broke it out into five 15 minute parts. And we saved a little time on the poly beats and like it was uh, worked. If anyone has questions, uh, please uh, either ask them in the chat or come off mute or it's okay to interrupt. This is not a, you know, an overly formal uh, session. We want to uh, you know, be supportive and help anyone who has an interest in in the territory that we're talking about. Uh, I'm gonna- Yeah, um, yeah. is pool, pool EV, is it just for um, pools or is it um, have a wider range of things you can sure. do with it? Yeah, it's, let me show you a little bit about that. Uh, good question. Um, I'm gonna jump over to uh, the browser and I'm gonna log into my uh, account. Uh, it is, I guess, um, primarily for uh, getting audience response, or like if you're if you're giving a presentation. Let's see, am I logged into? I might. Oh, I'm not logged into the right one. I've got three accounts, uh, which sometimes drives me. Crazy. Let's see, I logged into the wrong one. So, uh, this is the correct one. Yeah, this is the YTV Youth 147. Okay, so uh, I guess one of the main ways you work with this is through these functions called activities. So, say I want a new activity. The new activity, it could be a multiple choice question. And then here you can see the uh, uh, the structure coming up. I could I could put a title in here, and I you know Ooh, that's nice. like uh, if we're ordering pizza or ice cream or pizza and ice cream, like what kind of pizza, what kind of ice cream? I was using the word cloud. Uh, that's what we were practicing with. You could do Q and A. Uh, I haven't quite gotten the hang of the clickable image. I understand, I think, what it means, but I, I never quite got that one to work uh, the way I expected. You could have a survey, you could have open-ended questions, click on more, you could do donut charts, icebreakers, upvoting, leaderboards, um, spotlight, two by two matrix, brainstorm. So uh, I think it's very useful if, if you were working with a group, maybe 15, 20, or maybe 100 people, and you wanted to get a sample, or not, not, even more than a sample, you wanted to get everyone's reaction to something, it, this could be a very powerful way to accomplish that. It could also be a, a quick and a fun way to do it with a smaller group of people. And it's also, I think, kind of enjoyable just as a way to get uh, audience participation or whoever's in the group uh, to make it a little more fun. Not, not, I don't mean fun and like fun in games, but just more engaging. Like you, like people feel as though they're actively involved and they're not just passive listeners. They're influencing and contributing to something that's being decided. It could be something very serious. Uh, yeah. Is that kind of answer your question uh, Richard is that yeah it does it, it okay. seems like something I've used before but this um it's like more advanced than the other apps I've used 
Like I've seen yeah. like surveys and open-ended questions. I've used polls, polled, poll websites before, but this one is looking really good. Yeah, I mean there certainly are, and, and we may even have a session on different survey tools because you know there's Google Forms, there's Microsoft Forms, there's SurveyMonkey, and and they maybe they depending on what your you know technology selections are you might favor one or the other or if you wanted to do something more advanced you may have to use a different one but um you have a poll everywhere and it could it could be integrated with i think it's keynote google sheets powerpoint so you can have uh you know slides that are driven by uh, you know the interaction with the audience okay um let me see let me go back to um yeah i think I, I was on here i just want to mention uh okay so we're going to talk a little bit about TechSoup. um i'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, a story of how the organization that i am involved with is benefiting from some microsoft technology Liz is going to take us through what we're calling for the very first time to an international audience, micro learning minutes, which we want to give you some, uh, you know, some short demonstrations of some tools that if you're not familiar or if you haven't tried using them recently, you might find it useful in their uh, you know, some things that are fairly easy to pick up. And then, of course, you could learn more. And then at the end, have a little bit of an idea storm where we share some thoughts, if you wish, about some things that you have been using recently that you like a lot and you just want to, you know, tell us that uh, something we might like to try. I've got a few that I'll start off with when we get to that point. Tell you a little bit about some future topics we're thinking about to have any uh, discussion. Uh, and if, uh, like I said, if we wrap up early, that's okay too. And the objective here is that when all said and done, that we leave with, you know, maybe at least one new idea, a new connection to somebody possibly, or to tell us if you're interested in getting something to uh, work, uh, and it hasn't been working to see if someone else has an idea. So we could, you know, offline, if, if people uh, want some suggestions or something, we could do that. And I'll have a web page that I'm going to set up to uh, put some things on. I know a couple of people said at the last minute they can join us today. So uh, I'm going to put some short summaries of these micro learning minutes on that web page and I'll show it to you. Uh, towards the end of our meeting. Okay, so the next thing I wanna move into is to share a little bit of information about TechSoup. And where did my web browser go? Okay, here it is. Okay, so I'm gonna take this off, I'm gonna take that off. Uh, this is our agenda, you can refer to that from the, uh, TechSoup Connect events page. Um, I'm going back over to the, well, let's say the, the homepage for TechSoup. So it, those of you who are on the call now, I know it's a small uh, group right now. We, we had like 13 or more. I don't know what the heck happened to everybody. But uh, now we're down to about five. So have you heard of TechSoup? I know that some of you have because I've mentioned it every now and then. Uh, have you heard of it, Audrey, in Florida? Okay, great. Uh, so uh, you may know everything I'm going to tell you about this, uh, so I'm not going to drag it out too much. There are new things that are made available through TechSoup. Obviously, this is their homepage. If you have an account with them, you can log in, I'm logged in, and 
there are a variety of ways that you can benefit from TechSoup. There's a product catalog, which I'm going to just show you some points on for software and some hardware. There are services available, such as courses, digital marketing. If someone said they wanted to bring an organizational website up by the end of the month and they had no idea how to do it, you can get some uh, you can pay, uh, you know, a nominal fee or, uh, you know, at least a competitive rate that's likely discounted from retail prices for website development and consulting. They have some free tools to, you know, some website auditing tools, uh, and you can get referrals to consultants. There's uh, community home uh, forums, library of articles, events webinars, things uh, other than what we're doing uh, in resources, articles, blog, and webinars from there. Okay. Um, so I'll just tell you a little bit about what, um, how I've uh, found TechSoup. I've been at the places where I've worked and now, you know, with the organization uh, I'm involved with now, uh, over several years, probably 10 plus years uh, with them. So you could see you can look up uh, donors or company names uh, alphabetically. And some of the ones that I've uh, taken advantage of is Adobe for Adobe Creative Cloud. Um, Let's come down here. Caravan Studios. That's a they're a pretty cool company. I had uh, one or two meetings with them. They have a an app. I'm just clicking on here if you're curious about or if this is related to the type of community work you do. Uh, I don't know if this is in operation just in the United States or if it's international, but uh, it's called Range. It's a mobile app that locates a time and a place where summer meals are served for youth who might otherwise, if we're during the school year, uh, getting uh, you know, lunches at a school cafeteria, what some options might be outside of when they're not at school during the summer. So that's uh, super useful. Uh, Constant Contact, that, that is a, like an email marketing type of uh, tool that some organizations use. Dashlane is a uh, password manager, I believe. DocuSign, DonorPerfect, Dropbox. Uh, I've been using that. I didn't need to upgrade, but if I needed to upgrade to, uh, I don't know, the business level or whatever it's called, I would probably uh, do it through TechSoup. Google Apps for nonprofits, G Suite, uh, in the future, we might talk about that as one of our uh, agenda items. I also uh, enrolled in that and have a, uh, for my organization, a Google Apps for Nonprofits platform, uh, with YouTube and so forth. I've purchased headsets through headsets.com, through TechSoup. Uh, I'm curious about iFax, internet faxing, HIPAA compliant internet faxing, Intuit. I've ordered that for organization accounting or business departments that I've worked in. Um, uh, Little Green Light is a donor management software. Microsoft, of course, for uh, Microsoft 365, or, uh, or even if you're involved, if you're in a larger organization that has uh, web servers or network servers that might need to run. Uh, Windows operating system and get uh, significant discounts there. I think back here at Cisco, I also ordered some hardware for the previous organization for network switches or access points uh, for internal uh, wireless coverage within the organization. Uh, there's quite a few. I'm curious about Otter AI. That is a, I think it's a voice or audio transcription service. So down the road, if, uh, if there's someone who uh, 
uh, finds it really helpful for their work. Uh, I'm curious to have, bring them on as a uh, as a guest presenter. A um, couple of them that I have no idea what they are. I've used them. Question Pro. I've ordered that. Uh, in my prior organization, it's a very robust type of uh, uh, survey platform. I say hello to uh, Eli Vandergeisen. He's the community manager and my coach and consultant. I think uh, of me as a cheerleader. Delighted to be here. Just wrapped up my own event. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, I'm going to take a, just a, a short uh Bit of time. Uh, Eli was helping me uh, practice with some things a couple hours ago. And then Eli, when we finished practicing, the internet went down in my neighborhood. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I was thinking that I, uh, uh, as long as cellular service was up, but we weren't sure that, that's, that there might have been a car accident or the weather is a little threatening and there's construction going on. So it's very common for us to, use, to lose electrical power. Uh, uh, and then when that goes down, of course, you're losing the internet. But we, we kept the electrical power and fortunately got it back uh, shortly after that. Uh, yeah, we're just taking a look down here through uh, TechSoup services. I was on the edge of uh, contacting them, and I still might with uh, the needs that I have for some uh, web uh, stuff that uh, I'm doing with, with the website. It's because everybody's not available all the time. So I need uh, for some backup. Um, Wix is, uh, that's also a, a fallback uh, that I, or not a fallback, but a, a go-to that I've recommended to some organizations, some nonprofit organizations for their websites. The Zoom, of course, and um, yesterday I was running the Zoom call and I, I like to think I am aware of what I'm doing, but not always aware of what I'm doing, I guess. So uh, I've got uh, a standby computer. So this is strange. My standby computer is better than my primary main computer. So like, why don't I switch their roles, I guess. And then I, you know, I've got the cell phone. So I'm, I'm on a Zoom session with people in North Carolina. And I told some of you that right before my very eyes, my computer goes into a restart, which I thought I had it set so that it should never do that. And then it did it again. So I'm, I'm bringing up the other, and then the other th problem I had, which of course, unless I draw your attention, you won't know, notice it, is that today I finally had the blur working. So like for three months, this super simple thing of getting the blur working, it's, it works on my, on my better, newer computer, but on this one. So the guy I'm in the, having the meeting with the North Carolina, he says, maybe just check that you've got all your updates. So uh, it, it, it's like I'm getting my own medicine because I'm always telling my family or anybody, run your updates, did you do your updates, do your updates. So, and that was it. So I thought it was on automatic pilot, but it wasn't. Ran the update and now I'm blurry. So, so that's uh, pretty cool. Uh, one of the other things I wanted to show on the TechSoup part before we move into our next session is the, um, let's see, if it's the digital skills area and the courses. So since Eli is here, I'm just, you know, tell me if I'm uh, saying this the right way. Digital skills is primarily with Microsoft and it's different than the courses, I mean, it's similar, but it's separate. I mean, there's like certifications you can earn and 101, 201, 301 levels. There's always like a that. level of, of arbitrariness to it all. So I would say, yeah, so there's text courses is like the bucket for all kinds of online courses for nonprofits. And within it, there is the subset of the digital skills, which are really focused as you talked about on the Microsoft suite of services that set is 
all 100% free for nonprofits. So that's, I think, yeah. the major distinction, where some of the other courses are free and some are paid. Um, and so there's a bit of a mix within that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah, it's great. Great having you, uh, you know, fill in some of the blanks for us. So I appreciate that. So I, I, I simply want to uh, make you aware of this. Uh, uh, like I said, before we move into, I want to stay with, with our agenda. And so you can see here, you can explore this yourself uh, under services, I think is where the TechSoup courses are. And uh, you can expand and, you know, there's, uh, I think anywhere that I've worked, I would walk around and I would ask, who is curious about Google Analytics? Because I would just love, you know, to have that covered by somebody who uh, wants to take that on. Uh, and you can see that there's, there are, there's trainings on specific applications and there's also trainings on on how to think about how to work with and set up an ecosystem or infrastructure for technology in your organization uh, such as you know organizing your remote team and that would be an example of that and you, your grant writing actually i'm applying for a grant uh, at the end of this month so i think maybe i'm going to look at this. I'm working with a grant writer, but uh, this is pretty fantastic to know that this is here, uh, particularly for those organizations who have enough staff that they can take on uh, those roles. Uh, so I'm just going to let you uh, just wanted to point you into the, you know, the ballpark, so to speak, and you can look at that. Uh, over here, uh, I had this page for these are the Microsoft Digital Skills Center. So I'm, I think I am clicked into that. Uh, and, uh, and so you can see um, you can get training here on different levels and uh, aspects of Excel, Office 365. There are some uh, hybrid or combination areas uh, if you're interested in, for example, uh, working with data management, and that will cross Excel and Power BI, Teams, and more Power BI. Uh, and of course, what there's some courses in Spanish. And actually, if Richard is still on, Richard, uh, I'm not asking you to dialogue with me, but I know that there's one person in Jamaica who is Spanish speaking that we're interested. And maybe I'll, I'll ask a question uh, about this person uh, that, uh, you know, is part of our community in, uh, yeah, uh, in uh, Jamaica. He's from Venezuela. And what we want to know is if we, if there are technology training packages that can be uh, downloaded onto a tablet or a laptop because at this point in time uh, he does not have regular access to the internet but some of us if we could uh, identify a training package almost for anything, whether it's learning English uh, for a Spanish speaking person or whether it's learning Microsoft technology uh, applications or any technology. Uh, Liz, I know you do training uh, with people in other countries uh, at times. So if there is some type of training package that can be downloaded to a computer so that the individual is going to use it, can work with it without internet access. Uh, please send me a message or put something in the chat. Does that make sense what I'm asking? Okay. Yes, um, there is actually a, a website or an app for children who does different um, subjects in school. So like okay. for Spanish, you have like Spanish subjects, you can download those documents that will help the the person or the child to learn more but because he's from venezuela he's more into the 
the Creole that we have here in Jamaica and not in English. So he understands only um, Spanish and the Creole that we use here. So okay. it's gonna be, gonna be hard, but for me being like a basic Spanish student, I can help him um, the, the basic level of Spanish. I can help him get English to a better level. And from okay. there, I think he can progress. Well, if, if it is of interest, I mean, the, the thought came to mind because I see here is a course about Excel, which is fundamentally useful to anybody probably having spreadsheet mm -hmm. skills. And it's it appears to me as though it's being presented in Spanish language. So, for example, if there was something like that that could be downloaded to learn. OK, so I don't want to take up any more time right now. Just wanted to uh, mention that because I I'm learning from my own presentation here because I was not aware, uh, not surprised, but happy to see that, like I said, TechSoup is uh, all the time coming out with new, different, more, better, other things. So uh, that's part of the reason why I was interested in getting involved with TechSoup Connect because it also definitely helps me with my uh, learning. Okay, so we want to keep moving along and staying up with our schedule here, and it is uh, a bit past. I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep this short story to just about five minutes so that I don't cut into uh, Liz's time here. What I want to bring up is a. Uh, I'm gonna. I can share this. Let's see if I go over to. Uh, I'm gonna put a file in um let's see, can i do it super easily uh, i thought i could just pull up a, a file from my uh should i be able to do that pull up a file from my desktop i could see that i have to go into onedrive but so i don't want to take up time doing that uh i thought someone did that on a previous meeting i don't want to do the same thing but um, all right, uh, I'll send it out if anyone's interested. So my organization had uh, the good fortune of receiving some donations from Microsoft last year. And what I'm showing you in this, uh, is this coming through reasonably okay where you can, you can, you can see it, this, uh, this graph or this picture here really it's a couple of, of pictures um, yeah looking good okay thank you all right so these are five microsoft devices three of them i think are microsoft go uh one is um, uh, microsoft the surface, surface. And the pro x and pro thank you thank you richard because <laughs> they are down in jamaica right now this is a digital pen and we sent them down uh, to be used by YTV Jamaica. This is from a year ago, so maybe uh, the community center is further along. We're waiting for the electricity and the internet. This is the exterior. Uh, it was a beautiful mural painted. Was that done by people you that know? That was or... um, during a summer camp in 2018. Um, yeah, Martin, someone came down and Everything you see there is um, the, the help of the children. Like all of us went and did something. That's beautiful. That's, that's just absolutely beautiful. Um, so uh, it, and here's a little bit of a story here. I'm not gonna go uh, through everything, but uh, we uh, became connected with an organ a community organization in Ashburton, New Zealand. And this is itself is extraordinary that our little tiny organization through some meetings and networking and sessions like this got acquainted with and i think liz you were on that call it was on march 21st and uh we met well actually kate white i had briefly become acquainted with her a year ago she, we remembered each other and we had a follow-up meeting uh kind of like a focus group that she ran and then a couple of weeks after that, she asked if we would be interested in 
coming up with or sending ideas for a logo that they wanted to use for their community organization, which is called, I guess one of their words, I'm not exactly sure if I'm using it the right way, is called a trust. So it's the Mid Canterbury Trust, something like, I don't know, a community foundation. But one of their campaigns is, you know, continuous learning or keep learning. And uh, Richard, who's at the session with us now, uh, collaborated with us. Uh, we had some ideas input from other people in Jamaica, from uh, one of our friends in uh, Southbury, Connecticut. Uh, definitely, you know, some very nice help uh, with uh, someone in New Jersey here. Uh, Richard did a fantastic job with coming up with the design. So you could see this is one of those devices that, that he was working on in the digital pen. And, uh, this is a nice thank you that we got. So it, it was, it's really an extraordinary example of a collaboration that could occur with, uh, in the spirit of reciprocity where we're getting a donation, we're doing something with it, we're paying it forward, we're collaborating and we're establishing, you know, uh, high regard, relationships across New Jersey, Connecticut, uh, Jamaica, and New Zealand. And uh, the next one is a picture of another uh, person who works, you know, as part of YTB Jamaica, you know, a little bit more of the uh, exterior. So we, uh, we were asked this, I think it was right before that's a picture of Richard. Oh, it's okay to show that Richard. I think it's okay. You gave permission to send it to us. So, um, yeah. The, uh, you know, the person that I know is a training manager at Microsoft asked me, I think it was, it, it was, it was the, the weekend before Memorial Day. Uh, and I was telling her that, yeah, because Memorial Day was on the 31st. It was right before that. And I said, I think I could have a story for you on June 8th. Well, today is June 8th, right? And then she wrote back and she said, you know, the sooner the better. And I said, oh, okay, I'll get it to you right after Memorial Day. And she didn't say anything. And I said to her, then I wrote back, I said, I think I can get it to you tomorrow because I was kind of feeling the vibration. And then I said, I'm going to get you something today. <laughs> and uh, so Richard sent some things in and Tafari sent some things in. And I just put together a rough cut version of this three page version. I sent it to her. She said, really appreciate it. I'm showing it to my boss tomorrow. And I'm thinking, wow. So then that night, I just spiffed it up a little bit and uh, put some borders around things and try to make it look a little nicer and uh, sent it to her. She said, wow, this is fantastic. I love it. Let's see if they love it. And then the next week, they come back and said, we have some super good news for you. Your story was picked. We're going to have our writers and video team get together with you and schedule something to, uh, you know, get this produced and they're going to put it on the Microsoft site. So that's just spectacular. And we're thrilled about that. We're a nonprofit organization and we, we've used a variety of different technologies, Adobe Creative Cloud, Krita, um, uh, Canva, just to brainstorm and share ideas. The next part of our uh, agenda here, I'm uh, passing the baton to uh, uh, Liz Carmines in, in Newburgh, New York. She is uh, one of our guests uh, here today. I mean, she's also part of YTV, so it seems strange to say that Liz, you're our guest. But <laughs> I'll just try to give you a little more honor to say you're both uh, uh, in the inner circle and you're also uh, like a guest with us. Mm -hmm. So would you talk to us? Uh, I rely on Liz a lot for marketing communication. So I'm really super happy that she agreed to. 
Awesome. Well, thank you for inviting me to do this. Um, could you perhaps stop your screen share so that I could start you mine? You bet. You bet. Okay, there we go. okay, so I'm going to just show two really quick things today um, using kind of graphic design tools that are free to use um, online. So this is Canva. Um, this is a tool that I have been using for several years, and it's really great to make all different kinds of graphic designs. Um, you can make flyers and, um, you know, invitations, um, brochures. Instagram graphics. Today I'm going to show very quickly how you can use their templates to make a logo. So um, this is a super um, user friendly program to use. Again, it is free and then there is an upgradable version. Um, but I find that a lot of the features are not completely necessary to um, upgrade uh, in order to use and there's a ton that you can do for free. So when you go into Canva, you'll first make an account. And so I'm already logged into my account. And what I'm going to do is come up here and search Canva for a um, logo. So I'm going to use their templates. And now you can start from scratch if you want. You could just create a design that's a square or a rectangle or whatever, but I wanna get started with a um, template that Canva offers to make a logo. So I'll go ahead and click on this logo um, icon <clears throat> and it's going to open up some options for logos so if you're say starting a small business or you have a club or there's anything you want to do that you need to make a logo for this can be really helpful to give you a starting point to create your logo now um, of course you'll probably want to customize these with um, certain colors and you'll want to change the text. Um, maybe you'll want to change the font to match your brand. But um, again, it does give a really good starting point um, from where you can create a logo. So here I just typed in logo and you can see a lot of um, unique different designs, but I'm gonna go a little bit more specific and I'm gonna put um, coffee logo as if I wanted to make a logo for some sort of a coffee shop. And you can see you can get really specific and it'll give you, um, again, these more specific options that are kind of related to a cafe or a coffee shop. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on one that I like. You can match this to uh, your brand and styling. And one thing to note is that when you go in here, um, you'll be able to see if they're free, if you hover over them in the corner. Um, and you'll also get to see if you have to pay to use any of them. I don't see any that are not free right now, which is great because if you don't want to pay for Canva Pro, they have plenty of options. But um, I do know if you like one of the Pro templates, they offer a 30 day free trial of Canva Pro so that you could always just get it to make your logo and then um, go ahead and cancel your subscription before you get charged. So I have this little logo sample and I'm just gonna go ahead and make some very minimal changes to make this kind of match my brand of my hypothetical coffee shop. So I'm just gonna change the text here to say Liz's coffee. And you can see there's an effect on it so that it's making the font perfectly in this circle. And I might, I'm gonna change this at the bottom to um, established 2021, whatever you wanna put there. And so again, I wanna make this match my brand. So maybe I wanna go ahead and change the colors. So I can click on this little icon. And when I come up in the corner, I can see all the different colors that are in this um, logo. So I'm just going to, choose some random colors that I want my logo to be. Maybe I'm doing like gray and I wanna do pink. I could search for pink and just use a color of pink that I like. Um, you can also enter a specific color code if you do have brand colors, but you can just kind of play around um, if you're kind of starting from scratch with creating this brand. Um, and once you have this, this is a, really simple logo that I could use. I could um, put it on my website. I could put it in the, I could put it in the corner of images if I ever want to just post on Im Instagram with my logo in the corner. Um, I could make stickers from it to offer in my coffee shop. Um, and this can be just the starting point to create other logos as well. So for example, say I want to have um, another version of my logo, I could just make a duplicate page. So all I did was click this little button here 
it duplicated it and now I can play around with this. So maybe I wanna make a black and white version of it for a sticker. I could just go ahead and change the colors to um, kind of offer these different options of my logo. So um, the other great thing about Canva is once you've um, started your logo, you can always go back over to the templates here and continue playing with more options. So maybe I decide mm, this isn't my favorite, um, my favorite logo. I can just keep going and keep the work I've already done um, and try out different options. Um, so we can see this one says it's pro. So I'm not going to um, use this if I'm not subscribed. I do subscribe to Canva Pro so I can use it, but um, you'll want to stick with the free ones if you're doing something without a Canva Pro subscription. Um, and so you can just play around. And since I already started with the, this original version and I put Liz's Coffee um, 2021, it automatically added my text into this uh, logo. So I, all I now have to do is maybe change the colors, say I'm doing grays. Um, I could just make it match my brand. And that would be, um, my logo design. Um, so then once you're done with this and you're happy with it, you can go ahead and just hit download and you can um, download it as a PNG. Now, if you are subscribed to Canva or as a pro subscriber, you can hit transparent background and it'll give you a PNG with, again, a transparent background. Um, and so that way you can layer it over top of images and things like that without having this white square around it. But um, if not, there's other ways that you can get that transparent background. Like there's some free um, tools online where you just up upload your picture and it takes away the background. So you could try doing something like that if you're not a pro subscriber. And that's how really simply using Canva, you can make a um, nice looking logo. Again, the one other thing I might do if I have a brand kit is I might go in and change the font. So if you just go up here at the top and once you click on a font, you can see all the different things you can do with that font. So I might pick a different font. If I have a brand font that I'm using, I can make it bigger, smaller, change the color, um, make it bold, italicize, and you can play around with some of these other effects to uh, make this exactly what you need for your brand. Um, That's great. That's fantastic. So yeah. this is, go ahead, Jerome. What, what, what is animate? What does that do? Oh, so animate would make this into a, um, like a little video, like a, a GIF or something like that. Okay. So I could show you what that would do. So if I go up here, I click on this page um, and I click on am animate, I can select what type of animation I want and it'll kind of give me an, uh, uh, okay. once I download it, it'll be a video. So this could yeah. be useful, like maybe on my Instagram, I wanna post it uh, or something like that. Um, you can create different types of animations. Cool. One other question. Um, is there a, a way to add a font if you don't see the one you want there? Um, not that I know of with Canva. I've, I, but there are a ton of fonts. Um, yeah. So there's, and what you can do too, if you're trying to discover what font you might want, um, one thing is I'll always kind of type what I'm looking for. So if I'm just looking for like cursive, I'll just type in cursive and okay. it'll come up or you can kind of sort. So if I just click on the, the search bar, handwriting, corporate display, headings. So it'll give you kind of categories of fonts um, okay. that allow you to kind of narrow down your search of like, maybe I want something that's kind of rounded. I can just go through and try out all the rounded fonts. Um, another thing you can do with Canva, if you have pro is make a brand kit for yourself where you um, set your colors and your fonts um, and so if I had that, I would see it right here. I haven't done that yet because I don't have a, a brand right now to add to my brand kit, but this would make it anytime I make a new document in Canva, my yeah. colors would stay right there and it'd be really easy for me to access. Okay. So that's Canva. And I will just very quickly show Adobe Spark because Adobe Spark is just another program that's very similar to Canva, but, um, I think it's just about personal preference. I have way less experience with Adobe Spark just because I love Canva so much. It's always my go-to, but there are some great things about Adobe Spark. So um, 
with Adobe Spark, you can just come in here and again, kind of pick a template. You could see I was already playing around, but I'll show you um, from the start what I would do. So I, I just want to make an Instagram graphic right now. We're not really focusing on the logo right now. We're just making a graphic. Um, and of course, with Adobe Spark, you also do need to kind of come make an account, log in, and it's free. And same as Canva, you can upgrade to access some more pro features. So when you open up an Instagram graphic template, uh, the great thing with these templates is that they make them automatically the size that you need. Um, so this is the size that's optimized for Canva or, or for Instagram, I'm sorry. Um, so what I'm gonna do is again, start with a template. And that's why these tools are so great because you don't have to be a graphic designer to create graphics. They're giving you really nice looking templates that you can just tweak to make them fit your brand. So I just went ahead and searched for coffee, again, kind of sticking with this coffee theme and also like this one. Um, so I can, once this creates a template, same thing as Canva, I can just go in and um, change the, the text and change the words, but Adobe Spark has a couple different features that make it fun to um, play around with the design. So let me just go ahead and change this to Liz's. And then we'll do coffee down here. So you just have to double click on the text to edit it. And then I'll just change the number 2021. So now I could definitely just keep it like this, but of course I wanna kind of play around with the colors. So what I can do is just, if I already know what color I want, I just hit whatever I want and edit the color. Or if you click on this little colors icon, um, you can kind of play around with these samples that they have. So this gives you color schemes that it will automatically convert your graphic to. So you can just see, maybe you don't really know what direction you wanna go with the colors. Um, and if I click on one and I like the colors, but I just don't like the layout, if I just hit shuffle, it'll shuffle those colors um, in that color scheme, just changing it up until I am happy with it. Um, so this is kind of a fun feature that I don't, that Canva doesn't um, really offer. If you don't have a, a strong direction with your brand yet, and maybe you just wanna play around with some different color schemes, this is a really great way to see different color schemes in action. Um, and then you could always go and change different specific colors. So maybe like all of it, except for you want like one standout color, I could just go ahead and um, do that and make that stand out um, in this little color scheme. Um, the other thing you could do is hit this design idea um, and it'll give me variations that are kind of similar in design. So these are, you're seeing very simplistic options. And so um, if I click on one of these, it will automatically convert my uh, graphic into this other graphic. Um, theme. So it takes the theme of this other graphic, the font, the colors, and it converts my graphic into that um, as closely as possible. And sometimes it's not always the cleanest um, transition, but um, this is just another fun way, again, to get ideas and play around um, with the design. And same thing as Canva, you can um, go ahead and add more text or anything else over here. That's not something I really went into because this is just kind of like the crash course on if you're not a graphic designer at all and you just want to make something from a simple template, um, this is how you can do it. Use the template and customize it um, to just serve the need that you have um, for a logo or a graphic. Oh, and the one other feature I will talk about is resizing. So say I have this and I like it as my Instagram um, post but I also wanna do an Instagram story. If I click on this, it will try its absolute best to convert it into that other size. And um, again, I might need to move some things around, maybe tweak it a little bit if I'm not happy with where it places um, the, the objects. But this is a good way that it can save some, some time to um, just use one design and utilize it on all different platforms. So. Um, 
these are two tools that, again, I think it really is just personal preference. And I've just really gravitated towards Canva, but I think it's a great idea to find one that you really like if you're going to be doing designs and stick with it because there's a lot more um, features that you can access once you get more comfortable with the, um, the platforms. And Liz, both of them have mobile apps, right? Yes. Yes, so you can use both of them on a mobile app um, with, as far as I know, pretty much the same features. I have used Canva on the mobile app. I have not used the Adobe Spark mobile app. Um, so I'm not completely sure if all the features transfer over, but I'm pretty sure that both of them do transfer over. Um, and yeah, Canva is actually very easy to use on the mobile app as well. I tend to prefer the computer just because you can see it um, bigger. But the one perk I think to using the mobile app is because sometimes things look different on a bigger screen than they do on our phones. So if I'm making a graphic on Canva for Instagram, I will often download it and send it to myself on my phone first to look at it. Because sometimes like just yeah. the font sizing and things like that, it's different. And since we know most people are using Instagram on their phone, you wanna make sure it looks good on the phone and not blown up on a computer screen. So that is definitely one perk to using the mobile app if you're making graphics for like, again, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn or whatever. But if you're doing a brochure or a flyer, I do find it's a lot easier um, on the computer. Sure, yeah. Or a tablet as well. But yeah, yeah that's this, crash course. <laughs> well, I, I, I liked it. I mean, I, I picked up tips. I didn't expect uh, to uh, get this much out. I mean, I, I mean, I expected I would get uh, the main idea, but I'm definitely going to be better just from these, uh, you know, five minute, six minute uh, overviews. This is our micro learning minutes. I think uh, <laughs> I think we're on fire with them. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Awesome. Okay. All right. Yeah. I will stop my share. Okay. I'm. Uh, we're we're going into the last part here, and uh, trying to come up with a name for this. So uh, I called it something. Idea storms. I, I know that there were needs parades. I was looking at things that Eli was sending me. Um, so I'm just going to, uh, you know, to close out with some good energy and ideas. Um, I am working on a web page and probably not going to do a whole lot more than this. We're going to put some video on it. But the, uh, the things that we showed here, it, it's being recorded. So those uh, outstanding uh, you know, short introductions of what you can do, like almost, you know, on the spot without, uh, you know, losing your stride on uh, Canva and Adobe Spark, we'll add them on here. This uh, page is not publicly available yet. Uh, it's going to be on a site called the ytbresourcenet.org and TechSoup Connect for TVO, and it will have uh, some of the information that we uh, discuss uh, during our sessions, and we'll pull out uh, some video clips of the um, demonstrations and examples so that people who uh, were not able to join us today, uh, they'll be able to see them. And I'm putting here some uh, topics that we're considering for future TechSoup Connect sessions. Uh, you can see them listed here. And what I meant by uh, the technology storm, I want to tell you uh, like in a minute, see if I could pull this off uh, in roughly a minute, a couple of things that I discovered recently in technology that are helping me to do better work, I'm going to say. Well, one is with Zoom. I just didn't realize that I was not on automatic updates. And so uh, once that was brought to my attention in a friendly way, I'm now, a, I'm now on the, uh, I've got the blur screen. It's something that I've wanted. I also learned about the literalness of what a green screen is. 
is uh, maybe everybody but me knows what it is, but I didn't literally know what a green screen is. So I found out about that, that you could actually buy one. And I was trying to talk my family to let me buy one, but uh, I do not have unanimous agreement <laughs> to get a, uh, <clears throat> a green screen gun. <clears throat> one of the other things that I came across, uh, let's see, I'm going to come off the screen share for a second, if I can do that. So if I come off the screen share so you could see me. Now, uh, when I was having a meeting with uh, Eli before, I had these guys on, all right? All right, so you could see their gaming headphones. Now, what I'm wearing now are bone conduction headphones. They're, you know, you could see a little bit if I turn my head. It's kind of like they're a reverse pair of glasses, you know? Now, the reason that that's personally important to me is that I was suffering uh, hearing loss and ear damage over the past year. And my doctor said, don't put things in your ear. Don't put earbuds in, don't stick pencils in, uh, don't use Q-tip swabs. So uh, she suggested either that I wear you know, headphones that come over the ear, or uh, my son had uh, a pair of these, uh, they're aftershocks, bone conduction, and they're pretty comfortable, and uh, I like them. The last thing I'm gonna tell you about is text messaging. It's a service that I think all of us are using with various providers, whether it's a pharmacy or dentist or product, and we, or pull everywhere where you send a code in and you're informed that you're, you're using cellular service and whatnot. But what I wanted to do was use it in the reverse way where people could send things out. I also wanted to send reminders out to people in my organization, but I wanted them to send things back. So in one of our future sessions, I'm going to, uh, show how that is done so that people can report information through the texting service and we run it through uh, Power BI. You can show uh, a report based on what people text back in. So we're using texting as a reporting tool. Um, okay, uh, last couple of minutes. Anybody interested in coming off microphone and telling us about something that they discovered recently or that they like. Um, it's kind of a small group. Anybody else want to say anything? Yeah, um, um, ever since using Adobe Illustrator, I started um, doing YouTube tutorials and I was so amazed on all the different stuff, stuff I learned. Like, I remember the other day you told that told me that you wanted to make some put on some greeting cards or something like that, and I went yeah, and I started seeing all these sort of designs. I made some, and they're looking really good. Like you have these designs I made like paper cuts, and I'm like whoa. So I'm planning to send you them within the week. I'm not complete. I'm not. They're not finished as yet, but I'll definitely send you some. I'm just happy that I got because. Graphic designing was something I had in the, like, it was a thing I wanted to do, but I didn't have the devices. So I really thank YTB for giving me that opportunity to, to, to enjoy this, um, this, this journey that you guys have put me on. It really helped me a lot. I haven't been doing much during the past year due to Corona and stuff, kind of been down. Um, this image right here is basically a freehand. It's not even complete, but I'm gonna perfect it and send it because uh, it's not on to scale, but yeah, I'm really happy that I met you guys. I'm really very thankful. Well, thank yes. you, Richard. Mm -hmm. Same here, absolutely. This is win win. Uh, it, it's just uh, great networking, and uh, and that's what we want to uh, have happen with TechSoup Connect. That I mean, what you're saying that is, uh, I think, the spirit of TechSoup Connect. Um, I want to show this design here. I believe you see it on the screen share. This is a design that Richard made. Uh, I'm going to uh, connect back with 
some of the things that Liz was telling us about uh, why she likes Canvas so much. And, uh, and I've been hearing her tell me that for several months and I finally got it. I'm like, <laughs> the riptide has pulled me in, design anything. And what I did this week was, uh, as Richard said, we, we have an interest and, and actually a demand and a request from some people for us to have some of the people involved with our organization send out greeting cards. Uh, you know, some people are going through losses uh, uh, in their life and uh, as a way to stay connected with them. And uh, we're combining that with our interest in graphics. And, and I use Canva to print the postcards. Uh, so I selected, you know, just a, a couple. I mean, uh, I think I ordered 10 just to see how it worked uh, with the envelopes. Uh, and I should be receiving them within the next couple of days. And that's going to be uh, someone else who's working on the project We'll be writing some personal notes out in them, uh, you know, handwritten notes, uh, putting, addressing them, and, and then mailing them out. So, and then we're going to do. Uh, it's an opportunity to uh, give recognition and uh, visibility to the work that people are doing in our organization. Where we'll use some of the designs on our website. We're creating logos for other organizations. We create greeting cards, and that's one uh, aspect of what we're doing. Um, okay, so we're in the closing one, two, or three minutes. And uh, is uh, what I want to ask is maybe the final question. I won't use any tool or poll. I'll just, if you want to put it in the chat. Uh, to say something, did you like the format we used? Or this is our first time uh, where we use this uh, format of five 15 minute sessions. Uh, so if it feels like it works and, and people thought it was okay, we might try doing that again next time. We have our upcoming meetings scheduled. Uh, uh, the next one is in August. It's August 10th, which is a Tuesday. We're, that's what we thought we would uh, work with for this first series. And then the one after that is in October. I think it's October 12th. It's also Tuesday at the same time. We made it at this time uh, thinking that it would make it possible for those, so those individuals who might be uh, on staff at some community organizations that would be the end part of one of their work days during the week and they could uh, possibly have the, uh, the you know the time if they if convince their boss it's related to uh, something that is their work responsibility it, uh, last year pre-covid we were running some similar things like this it was called tech for good i would run the meetings in the evening at seven o'clock um, 7.30 at a public library or Microsoft community room. And it was tough getting uh, people to come out with the travel and the driving. Sometimes there would just be one person there. So obviously with the uh, virtual session and we're not restricted geographically, of course, we have a representative from Florida, from Jamaica, a couple of people from New York, and there were a handful of people from New Jersey, just something came up at the last minute. Uh, but how about uh, giving me some feedback? Is, did this work out okay? Do you think this is, uh, uh, have we got a good format that we should continue with? Okay, all right, thank you, Audrey. I was, I was hoping you would say exactly what you did. So I really appreciate that. I, I think we're gonna continue with this. I'm going to check with the people in New Jersey who couldn't make it if they if they want. I could uh, well, now that we have the video. I could uh, I could say Liz is always our guest presenter because I could just show her video because uh, it's it's really uh, uh, like exactly the kind of thing we want to have in our micro learning minutes and um, want to do some uh, on some other topics. Are there uh, 
what we're going to be, uh, we are going to send out the recording. What I want to do is uh, we're going to edit it if, if there's any, you know, downtime, you know, to just clean it up a little bit. I, I was, came on like 15 or 20 minutes before. I'm not sure everybody wants to <laughs> hear me rambling on for 20 minutes. And we'll pull out the, the good parts, primarily, that's Liz. Uh, <laughs> And, and maybe, uh, uh, you know, some good questions from Richard, some points I made on, uh, or that Eli and I were making about TechSoup. So, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll make that available. So Audrey uh, H, yes, we'll, uh, we'll make that available. I'm going to get it uh, myself. This is not on my platform. It's on the TechSoup platform. So they're going to get it to me, you know, soon, I don't know, a day or so, whenever Eli has a chance to pull it down, and either put it on a, a YouTube or put it on a Google Drive and, and let me download it. And one of our projects that we have with some uh, people who are uh, doing things with us is we're uh, using some video editing programs uh, on Adobe, I guess that's Adobe Premiere, Adobe Rush, Adobe Spark, uh, does video, I don't know if it does video editing. Uh, Microsoft has a simple video editor that works if, if you need something real quick. It's simple if you have a Windows 10 computer. And we'll show that uh, in one of our sessions as well. But we'll get the, uh, the uh, you know, the highlights of today's session, uh, I, I would hope by the end of the month, uh, if not soon. Okay. So it's 5.01, I wanna close this out, I wanna stay on time. I'm gonna put my uh, email in here if anybody doesn't know it, if you have a question. Uh, and I think you can probably communicate in some way through a TechSoup Connect if you liked it, tell everybody you see. <laughs> and then, uh, uh, we'll get some more people out for our next session in August. If, if it seems like there's enough interest, I can certainly run a se another session. Uh, like if people like to have things either monthly or every other month or quarterly, and you don't have to come to all of them, of course. Uh, but whatever seems like we could get uh, at least a handful of people, if not a bit more, uh, that's kind of will determine how frequently we offer this. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Audrey, uh, Harold. Thank you, Audrey Blake. Thank you, Liz Carmine. Thank, thank you. Richard Reinhardt. Thank you, uh, Eli Vanderdyson. And thank my family for taking the dogs outside so that they didn't bark in the room <laughs> I was doing the session. Right. on. Y'all have a good evening and looking Bye. forward to hearing from everybody. Bye-bye.